Okay, so if we have a look at a beaver pelt, you can get an idea of the adaptations that beavers have to be them, allow them to survive in the conditions that they do and be perfectly adapted to their environment. This is a pelt of a, an adult beaver taken from a, uh, one of the continental animals, not one of our animals here in Knapdale. This is a quite a big adult, but typically beavers measure about 1.1, 1.2 meters from the tip of the nose to the tip of the tail which the, makes them relatively big. They're also quite heavy as well, in the region of about 20 kilos or so. Comparisons really I use when I talk to people regularly about beavers is if you can imagine a, an adult beaver is about the size of a tubby Springer Spaniel. People want to know the comparison and that's a, that's a good one to use for, for an animal like this in the wild. It has thick, uh, very dense fur, which makes, thing, makes it uh, very well adapted to keeping it warm and waterproof because it has a waterproof under fur. Um, these furs have been very valuable and one of the reasons that the beaver was hunted to extinction was because of its fine fur. And if I have a closer look at the animal we can start to think about some of the adapti adaptations in certain parts of the, of the body itself. Starting with the, the head end of the beaver, big broad head with nose, eyes and ears on this animal obviously flattened down but sit right at the top of the head so when the animal is swimming in the water it has a very very low profile similar to an otter but the sensory organs are sitting right on, on top of the animal as it glides through the water creates a bow wave very similar to an otter as well and that's one way of picking up beavers swimming in the water is the distinctive v-shaped bow wave quite small ears tucked away if we look at the front paws the front feet you can see have got large claws on them not webbed but large claws which are used for digging, which beavers do a lot, particularly to create their burrows, but also for manipulate their food items as well. So quite nimble front feet. We'll run down the body, and on this one you can start to get an idea of the underfur, the belly fur on this, this beaver, which is really particularly fine and warm, down to the large back feet. Now obviously in a specimen like this, this is quite shrunk, shrunken up, but you can see they're considerably bigger than the forefeet and they're actually webbed as well so these really help propel the beaver through the water so back feet very important to the beaver large and webbed but the thing that probably is most distinctive about a beaver is its tail and although this tail is very flattened you can see it has this leathery scaly appearance it's quite unique uh, in, a, in a live healthy beaver this tail will be quite thick and fat and if they lose a bit of body condition uh, their tails get thinner as well because a beaver tail is a place where the beaver stores puts down its fat reserves so one of the ways we look at our beavers to check them for their health is to how thick and fat the tail are now interestingly you can see a crescent shaped mark on this beaver tail and that's a bite mark from another beaver and if I flip this pelt over and we have a look around you can see there are a lot of white marks on the pelt underneath and these are all scarring points from where the beaver has been fighting with other beaver. Beavers are quite aggressive certainly to their neighbouring uh, territorial animals but occasionally to animals within their own territory and they do fight and they are often covered in quite a lot of scars as well. Now the final thing to, to mention about the beavers as part of the Scottish beaver trial here in Napdale are the fact that at time of release all our beavers are tagged now they're tagged in a variety of ways. At release, they're fitted with a radio transmitter like this one, which is attached onto a piece of webbing, which is glued with a special epoxy resin on to the rump of the beaver. And that emits a radio signal, which is unique to this animal in this tag, which allows you to track the animal in the wild, certainly for the first few weeks of the trial, because eventually over time and through grooming and wear and tear, those tags do fall off. The beavers are also tagged with a pit tag, a microchip in the, the back of their neck, very similar to what you may have a, to a family pet, which again has a unique code when scanned. And also ear tags, which one in each ear, which are individually coloured to give the unique family ID member for, for that particular beaver, to allow us in the field to spot a beaver and through its ear tags, work out which family member it is. And also through radio tracking, we can work out uh, which beaver it, it may be as well uh, for a certain period of time and on some beavers we have uh, GPS tags which also log all the movements of the beaver.